It only took an hour to get the code running on the Raspberry Pi. And without any expectations, we plugged the Xbox controller into the Raspberry Pi, and to our delight, all of the motors worked. So we'll start with the bottom. If we use the right joystick, we can move clockwise and counterclockwise. If we move the joystick up and down, we activate the shoulder. Up, or down, and then up. The thumb pad, if we move it up, we do the forearm. So please note, we've literally just uploaded the code. We've done no optimization, so yes, this motor is probably not receiving enough current, and that's why it's, this is why the forearm is moving so slowly. We can also rotate the wrist. And then for the gripper, we use the left joystick. So up, sorry, down, up. And then as you saw me doing, left and right, rotate the gripper. And so this axis right here is the extra axis that Movio does not have. And we're still working on the gripper. What's really cool is when you start moving all the axes in tandem. Hey Jeff, the wrist motor feels really hot. I think it's receiving too much current. Oof, jeez. Can you hand me something cold? Yeah, sure, just a sec. After the excitement wore off from the first couple of movements from the robotic arm, we realized how inconvenient it was to have to unplug my monitor, mouse, and keyboard for my current setup into the Raspberry Pi so that we can program it. So to remedy this, we incorporated a Raspberry Pi Foundation touchscreen monitor into our design so that overall our design will have a smaller footprint and will be up and running within minutes of plugging it in. The touchscreen monitor interfaces with the Raspberry Pi uh, via DSi ribbon cable. I just want to point out that the rest of this video is going to be our modifications to the RoboTools kit. So the touchscreen monitor and the other stuff that you guys will see are not included in the original kit, but I will list the parts and the STL files on my website. I didn't want to reinvent the wheel, so I found a housing for the touchscreen monitor on Thingiverse. The touchscreen monitor needs 5 volts for power. While reasonably priced, the slush engine board is still pretty expensive, so it's very important that we protect it. So we 3D printed a housing so that the robot wouldn't hit it, we wouldn't hit it, it would stay protected. Unfortunately, the housing was too long to be printed off in one go, so I printed it off in two separate pieces, which I will join with dollies. The robot's powered by very strong motors, so it's important that there's a quick way to stop the robot if something bad were to happen. So I'm using a emergency stop button. I want to quickly talk about power. We need to power three things. The driver board, the touchscreen, and the Raspberry Pi. Unfortunately, the driver board runs at 24 volts, and the Raspberry Pi runs at 5 volts, and the touchscreen runs at 5 volts as well. Now, the Raspberry Pi can draw 5 volts from the slush engine, but I want to be able to turn off the slush engine without turning off the Raspberry Pi, because I'd have to reboot. So we're going to give the Raspberry Pi its own access to 5 volts. We only have one power supply, so typically you would splice this wire in order to supply power to all the different components but this can be hard to see for you, the viewer, and it can be a little bit messy. So we're using a screw terminal block, which will allow us to split the power. There are two jumpers, red and black, which connect the 24 volts and ground terminals together. To step the 24 volts down to five volts, we're gonna use a DC-DC converter. Here you can see 24 volts input, five volts output. Stepper drivers are notorious for overheating, so I'm installing two 24 volt fans. These will also need 24 volts, so they're going into the screw terminals as well.
Now I'm connecting the DSi ribbon cable. This is the actual switch portion of the emergency stop button. Pressing down that little red button will actually open the circuit and stop the power from flowing to the motors. It's important when you're doing buttons to always cut the positive power supply and leave the ground. If you cut the ground and you leave the circuit exposed to 24 volts, then you're gonna damage it. So I took the lazy way out. I should have fastened this down, but I used epoxy instead. I forgot to mention, I put heat sinks on each stepper driver. So I only measured once when I was designing this. I should have measured twice, but I got very lucky. Uh, there's enough clearance to allow the base motors to rotate past. So right now we're in the early stages of teaching the robotic arm how to actually move. If we press the button X, it'll recall over the previous points we've already saved and then perform some action. So if we press X, We can see all the axes moving together. Next video, when we actually finish the gripper, we'll get the uh, robotic arm doing some useful tasks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. In the next video, we're going to showcase the capabilities of this robotic arm. And after this project's finished, we're going to work on the 3D food printer. My name is Dr. D Flow. My name's Jeff. Thanks for watching.